and not from Friday. Nope. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to move on to section 5.8. 5.7 will probably, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of very specific stuff about how many roots you're going to have in very specific situations. And, and um, we might address that just a little bit next year, but, but for this year, we've got too many things that we need to get to, and with all the snow days, it's not going to happen. Okay. First thing I want to start off with this. This is going to seem kind of like a review, but it, it well it is review, but it's leading to something greater. So x minus four, get out your whiteboards at two x plus three. This is going to sound sound silly, but show me the solutions. And show me. Should be able to just go boom boom. Bunch of negatives. Yep. 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 Mm, uh, the second one's not right. Good. Um, should just have two solutions. So this one right here, we're going to have four and negative three halves. Okay? Because it's what I can plug in here to make that zero and negative three halves here. Because if you would picture setting this equal to zero, we get 2x equals negative 3, x equals negative 3 halves. Okay? I'm going to beat this like a dead horse for a couple more problems. Okay? 4x plus 7, um, 5x minus 11. Go. Good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Um, you've got them flipped over. Okay, good. Okay. Boom. Negative 7 fourths and 11 fifths because if I'd go 5x minus 11 equals 0, I get um, 5x equals 11, x equals 11 fifths. Okay. Let's do another one. And there's a purpose here, there's a poipus. Okay. Let's go AX plus B and RX plus W equals zero. I don't need the X. Good. Good. Don't need the X. Don't need the X. Okay. Okay, good. I, th I think you guys are all right. Let me go ahead and take a look at this. I got the opposite of B over A and the opposite of W over R, right? Okay. So now, I'm going to get a visit from the dumb math teacher. It's been a while. Well, no, it seems like he's been making too many visits lately, uh, unintentionally. But here we go. Um, we need to solve a quadratic, and one of the ways to solve a quadratic is to factor, okay? So let me show you an example, and then I will ask you to try some on your own, okay? So I have x squared plus, um, let's go 2x minus 8 equals 0, okay? So then what you do is you put these parentheses... You put your x and your x, and then you pick a number, and you put it here, okay? Right? What? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Let's do the signs then, okay? And then we'll pick like 5. 5 won't work. Has to be a different word other than a multiple. Factor. Oh, so this number here needs to be a factor of 8. Is that important? Okay. So hold on. Let's make a note. This number here has to be a factor of your, what, what is this 8 called? Constant. Thank you. Factor of your constant. Okay. Factor of my constant. Got it. Okay, let's try another one. 
Okay, I'm going to try and put that skill to use here. Um, let's go. Hold on, just a second. Okay, so so I'm going to go 3x squared minus 13x minus 10. You don't need to write this yet. Hold on. Okay. So I need um, plus and minus since. Uh, Jim wanted to do the signs first, and then the ten. And what? Okay, hold on. We said that these numbers have to be what? A factor of my constant. Okay, so five and two. Does that go okay for now? Okay, for now. Okay, we'll just try it. And then my other numbers. Let's go two x and two. At what? What do we mean has to be three? Okay, so what's got to be true about this number? Fact, these have to be a factor of what? The leading, I hear leading coefficient. Okay. So here's the thing. When we factor things, there's only very common sense things that you can pick for your first number and your last number. You can't just pick any old willy-nilly number you want. Okay? So if I was going to pick this, if I was going to go back to this AX plus B and the RX plus W, what do you know about B and W? They have to be factors of, these are factors of, well, it could be BW, but I'm just thinking the bigger picture. Fact, where does this BW come from? It comes from my constant. Okay. And the bottom numbers have to be, they have to be what? factors of my leading coefficient. Okay? That's huge. That is huge. Okay? So, does that make sense that after looking at this, these have got to be factors of my constant? They got to be. And that these f first ones have to be factors of my, of my leading coefficient? They got to be. Okay? That's where these numbers were coming from. Like this 7 and 11, those are both factors of negative 77. Okay? 4 and 5, those are both factors of 20. Okay? So what we have is we have this thing that's called the rational root theorem. And this is what we're going to put to use today. What? Oh, I bought some more stickers this weekend, too. Kittens and puppies. Who does? Okay, rational root theorem. It says if I've got some polynomial P of X equals, and I'm going to make this really easy. I'm going to make my first, my leading coefficient L. And then my constant C. Okay, any possible rational root must be of the form. Let's go C over L. Where this is a factor of my constant. And L factor of my leading coefficient. And for me, there's a very easier way to remember this. Whenever you're like doing um, construction and say you want to build a doorway or a window or something like that, one of the first things you decide is your center line. And we always mark on there CL. Okay. So constant factors up top, leading coefficient factors on the bottom. Constant factors up top, leading coefficient factors on the bottom.
Okay. So here's our job. List all possible rational roots of. We'll start off with this x, x to the third plus 7x squared minus 10x plus 6. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do this one. Uh, well, I, I'll tell you what, let's make this a little harder. Let's put a 5 in the front. So if I'm going to list all my possible factors, well, my factors of 6, where are they? 2 and 3, what else? 1 and 6. What about my 5? 1 and 5. So I've got to make every possible fraction with these on the top, these on the bottom. Piece of cake. So, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 1 over 1, 6 over 1, 2 over 5, 3 over 5, 1 over 5, 6 over 5. Do I know whether they're po positive or, min or negative? No, so I'm just going to put plus or minus. So you're going to try one on your own. List all factors, same directions. Okay, let's go. Um, 4x to the third plus 7x squared minus 10x plus 5. List all my possible rational roots. And there's a point that we're getting to here. Don't show me this because I won't be able to just visually check them all real quick. So um, I don't have like Iron Man vision. Constant factors go up top, leading coefficient factors go on the bottom. It's the only options. Which should make sense, because there's no way that I would factor this and go, um, dude, let's try this one. 3x plus 7. Would that be a potential factor of this? No. And therefore, would negative 7 thirds be a potential factor of this? No. But this, your, your roots, the top number comes from this, which comes from this. The bottom number comes from here, which comes from here. There's got to be some relationship for all these numbers for everything to um, to work right, for there at least to be an option. Okay? Let's try a more difficult one. Okay. Same directions. List all possible rational ruts. Let's go. 10x to the fourth plus the... I don't really care about all the middle stuff. Unless we start to do a Descartes rule of signs or something, which, ooh, um, six plus six. Just a few options on this one. Just a few options. Again, you could generate these any way you wanted to. What I did was I said, let's put 1, 2, 3, 6 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 6 over 2. 1, 2, 3, 6 over 5. 1, 2, 3, 6 over 10. Or you put 1 over 1, 2, 5, 10. 2 over 1, 2, 5, 10. 3 over 1, 2, 5, 10. 6 over 1, 2, 5, 10. And hey, could be plus or minus on all these things. Are there some that are, re that are repeated, though? Do you see anything that we can cross out because it's been repeated? Two over two. That's already been somewhere else. That's one. What else? I see a couple others. 
2 over 10 is 1 fifth. Okay, so we can cross out that one. Okay. 6 over what? 6 over 10, that's 3 fifths. There you go. What would you say? No, because 1 fifth is still an option. I, 1 fifth is just expressed two different ways. 1 fifth is 1 fifth there, or 2 tenths there. I just need to keep one of them. And there's one other thing we can cross out. 6 over 2 is the same thing as 3. Okay. So what is our quest here? And actually, this is going to go pretty slick. I'm going to have, I'm going to show you guys different ways of checking to see if it's a root rather than just doing everything by hand over the next few days. Okay. So here's our goal. Here's what we're going to try and do. Factor and solve. Okay. Um, x to the third minus x squared minus 10x minus 8. Before, I would, we gave you a starting point. We said, hey, x minus 1 works or x minus 7 works or something like that. Right now, we have no idea what works. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to list all your possible rational roots. We should only have eight of them to check. Okay, go ahead and list them. Go ahead and list all your rational roots. And this, is, this will give you all your possible shelf numbers. Should be just plus minus one, two, four, eight. Okay. So, working together. Pick one of those things, throw it on the shelf, and see if you can get something that has no remainder. So these are your potential rational roots or your shelf numbers. Go ahead, throw something on the shelf and and yell out, hey, hey, seven works, or whatever, when, it, when you find something. And then we're going to all love you because you've made our job a lot nicer. Just trial and error at this point. Four works. Okay, so here we go. So let's throw four on the shelf. One, four, three, twelve, two, eight, zero. Sweet. So now x minus four is a factor. x squared plus three x plus two is the other factor. What's this equation called since it has a lesser degree? Depressed equation. Okay. Maybe all its hair is falling out. Or maybe it's gained like 40 pounds since college. You could plug it in too. Thank you. Yeah, you could. You could he's using what's what's that called when you plug it in? Synthetic, synthetic substitution. substitution. He's using synthetic substitution to see if it's a rough. You can also also do that if you want. Synth a synthetic division might be a little quicker, but and then this one we just go ahead and solve x plus two x plus one. So then there is our factored form with no starting point now. We know our own starting point. And my solutions are 4, negative 2, negative 1. Done. Okay, we're going to try another one by hand, and then I'm going to show you the guard Mosman method. Okay. Well, let's see. Let me find one that's going to work really nice for us. Two x to the third minus five x squared minus twenty eight x plus fifteen. Okay, stop before we do anything. Right now, theoretically, we're trying to solve factor this, solve this, and the reason why we have to do this because we don't have a cubic formula. The quadratic formula. Oh, that's nice. Negative b plus minus squared b squared minus four c over two a. Got that. There actually is a cubic formula, but it, it is nasty, 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 nasty. 
nasty, nasty. Okay. Um, so, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a way to solve this. So, list all your possible rational roots real quick. Go. Because we don't want to put something on the shelf that's a waste of our time. Okay. And I'm going to grab my computer. Make all your fractions. Come on. Okay, so for your options, did you get 1, 3, 5, 15, and 1, 3, 5, 15 over 2? Okay, so let me make sure it factors first. Yes, factors nice. Go! Plus or minus, you don't know if it's positive or negative, so it might be worth, yes! Three! Yay! Wow, that was fast. Three works. So I get two, six, one, three, twenty-five. What? Three works? No, well, three doesn't work. I'm not getting three to work. Dang it, keep trying. Five? Let's double check this. Five works! Negative three works. Five and three. Okay. So two, ten, five, twenty-five, negative three, negative fifteen, zero. So now from this five, I get an x minus five. I don't know. That's a good question. I. No. So now I can go ahead and factor this, of course, using my logical methods here. And I've got 3 and 1. Um, good. There we go. So then here's my fully factored form. And my solutions, 5, 1 half, negative 3. Okay, first of all, why is the rational root theorem important? Because it reminds you, don't waste your time with 2 on the shelf, negative 2, 4, 6, um, 7, 8, 9, 10. It limits, it takes you from infinite possibilities to finite possibilities which is nice. I know it's still a pain, but it's nice. Okay? Um, so then what we have is we can do, you know, then, then it's just, just guessing at this point. I do want to show you a tool that is very handy. Elizabeth and Caitlin, you guys remember the extra credit you did? You can do synthetic division on your on your computer. And I think this is something that I would encourage you guys to use. Okay. Um, I'm going to show this to you. You guys can set this up tomorrow if you want. But this is actually, um, it, I would consider this fairly basic um, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets uh, uh, programming. So what she did was, I, I don't know who this was, um, one of the two. Um, 
It just does synthetic division for you. So on that last one, um, what was our last one? I did, here's my numbers here, 2, negative 5, negative 28, 15, and then shelf number that we've, that we've tried, um, 1, nope, didn't work. Got negative 16 for a remainder. Um, negative 1, nope, didn't work. 3, nope, didn't work. Negative three, boom, work. Okay, this will do synthetic division for you. Okay, so let's take a look at it. These right here are all just defined um, numbers. You don't, I don't have to do anything special for those cells at all. This cell right here, which is very simple, which is B1. This cell. What's the cell here going to be? B3 times A1. Let's see if that's right. Yeah. And so how do you do that? Well, it's very, very straightforward. So if you, if, say if you were, if we were going to make one more column of this, well, what would this number, what would this be right here? Equals. B3 times A1. You know, say if we wanted to make a, qu a quartic instead of a cubic. Okay. And so, say if this was like 2 or whatever. Okay. And what would this be? Equals F1 plus F2. I would consider that fairly basic um, spreadsheet skills. Okay, um, would that be handy? Yeah, you can use you can use yeah, your you know whiteboards as much as you want, but it's just going to be it's just going to take a lot longer. But the bottom line is we still need to establish what are our possibilities, and then um, and then go ahead and um, see what we have for um, possible shelf numbers, and then. Start plugging them in. Okay, I thought you guys would see this and go, "Oh, that's cool." You guys are just seeing those going. Just give me your assignment, because I think this is slick. If I had the choice to write it out on whiteboards or use my use my um, spreadsheet, I'd be like, "That's awesome." Okay, so. Setup's so not gonna be that bad. Because right now. All you have to do to all you have to do is define one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cells, and it's just equals click click equals click click equals click click, and actually it goes pretty goes pretty fast. Um, if I was going to do one of these, I could probably set it up in like two minutes or something. What? Okay, that's fine. If if that's if that's what you want to do, that's that's fine. Um, so this is actually pretty slick, and I would invite you guys to do this, and then I would let you guys use this on the phone and, and see what it feels. So. Okay. Um, let's. Yeah, it's hard to predict it does just funny. Okay. Um, so. so that's what we're that's what we're gonna do tomorrow. Let me show you eight five seven real quick. Whiteboards throw put them away.
Um, I'm going to show you something here real quick. Two things. And, and then your assignment's going to be for tomorrow in class. I will still, yeah, I'm going to be gone. Um, I told you about the cubic formula. I'm going to show you what the cubic formula is real quick. And then, um, and then I will show you, um, I don't know if I'll show you something by a second or not. There's the cubic formula. X equals the cube root of the quantity negative b to the third over 27 a to the third plus bc over 6a squared minus b over 2a. And this is the first part plus second part minus b over 3a. So you get your choice. You can either memorize this formula or know what the rational root theorem is and throw some things in the shell. Isn't this crazy? Sorry, not interested. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, a, I mean, I think that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> really? Okay. Um, so let's take a look at what I'm going to give you tomorrow. Because um, I've got some people in here that are going to be gone tomorrow. So I will go ahead and... Um, Pick something today. I'll just write it up here. Okay. Here we go. Three sixty three. Three seventy. Long what? Yeah, I know. And I don't know what happens when I'm recording and I'm putting stuff to the computer. Probably it just shows a blank screen. Let's go thirteen fifteen. Thirteen fifteen are just list the possible roots only. You do not have to go ahead and factor that. Tomorrow. So I'll do 19 through 19. Yeah, let's find this. So factor it and find your solutions. Okay. Nineteen through thirty one and thirty six. Do fifty two for fifty five. That's to do during class tomorrow. Um, if you're going to be gone for teams tomorrow. Let me modify the nineteen through thirty one. You get you can just do odds on the 19th and 31. Because trust me, your brain's going to hurt enough tomorrow that um, that's sufficient. Teams at UNL.